Exam Scholar, Real Estate Edition. Question 1. The following could be used by the buyer as earnest money deposit in purchasing real property. A. A promissory note secured by a deed of trust. B. A postdated check. C. An unsecured promissory note. D. All of the above. Answer. D. This deposit can be in any form but must be disclosed to the seller prior to the seller accepting the offer. Question 2. All of the following are required of a real property security dealer, except A. A real estate broker's license. B. The issuance of a real property security dealer's statement to each person purchasing a real property security. C. File and maintain with the commission a $5,000 bond. D. Post an additional $5,000 bond for each series transactions involving a real property security. Answer. C. Only one bond is required. An additional permit is required for each series of transactions. Question 3. Seller Abel, the owner of Blackacre, lists the property for sale with Broker Baker. Abel fails to authorize the agent to accept the deposit on his behalf. Buyer Charlie makes an offer on Blackacre and gives Broker Baker a check for $5,000 as a deposit. Under these circumstances, Broker Baker A. Can accept the check if he immediately gives it to seller Abel. B. Can accept the deposit an agent for the buyer Charlie and place the monies in the broker's trust fund. C. Cannot accept the deposit because of the wording of the listing agreement. D. None of the above. Answer. B. The owner did not authorize the broker to accept a deposit on his behalf. The law of agency demands an agent to accept all offers unless specifically instructed by his principal not to do so. Under these circumstances, the broker should take the offer, however, he would accept the deposit at the agent of the offer and hold the deposit as the agent of the buyer. Question 4. Which of the following is real property? A. Stock in a mutual water company? B. Fruit on trees already sold by contract? C. Minerals or gas removed from the ground? D. Crops before harvest? Answer. Stock in a mutual water company is an appurtenance. Each share is considered to be appurtenant to a specific piece of real property and cannot be sold separately. An appurtenance is defined as real property. Question 5. Using a note as a deposit from a buyer in making an offer. A. The note must be cashed before opening escrow. B. A note cannot be used as a deposit for an offer. C. The note would be the same as cash. D. The agent should inform the seller that the deposit is in the form of a note before the seller accepts the offer. Answer. D. A licensee may accept a note from a buyer as a deposit, other in the form of a deposit given by builders. The licensee must then inform the seller that the deposit is a note before the seller accepts the offer. Question 6. Richard Rock, a new real estate salesperson, made strong efforts to obtain listings in an unintegrated community. He found success by insinuating to property owners that should minorities move into the area, the value of their homes would increase. Which of the following terms best describes the activities of salesperson Rock? A. Steering. B. Panic peddling. C. Blockbusting. D. Both 1 and 3. Answer. D. Such activity is described as both panic peddling and blockbusting. Question 7. Which of the following will be found in the Federal Fair Housing Law? A. A provision that real estate licensees should not discriminate in the sale of any real estate. B. A code of ethics which requires all real estate brokers to follow the golden rule. C. A provision which allows for mortgage subsidy insurance and government loans. D. 
a provision which allows all prospective buyers to be given the same opportunity to select available houses in their price range without restrictions because of race, color, religion or national origin. Answer. D. The Federal Fair Housing Law applies to residential property and prohibits discrimination on the basis of color, race, religion or national origin. Question 8. A real estate broker advertises that if a buyer buys from him or a seller lists with him he will pay the party $50 from the fee or commission he receives from the transaction. The broker. A. Can do this. B. Cannot do this as it is a violation of the Business and Professional Code No. 10176. C. Can credit the buyer's escrow account with $50 but he could not compensate the seller. D. Can give a rebate of commission to the seller, but he cannot pay the $50 to the buyer. Answer. A. This constitutes a finder's fee which may be paid to unlicensed person as long as the fee remains a finder's fee. A finder's fee is payable when the person has no negotiations in the transaction whatsoever he just tells you of the prospect. You need a real estate license if you act as an agent. There is no license required to act as a finder. A finder does not represent anyone, they merely tell a licensed agent about prospects. He does not enter into the negotiations. Question 9. The law which governs the distribution of property after a dissolution of marriage is contained in the A. Code of Civil Procedure B. Civil Code C. Business and Professions Code D. Commissioner's Rules and Regulations Answer B. The law which governs the distribution of property after a dissolution of marriage is contained in the Civil Code. Question 10. The distinguishing characteristic of a real estate option when compared to a conventional contract of sale is its A. Lack of mutuality and obligation. B. Irrevocability. C. Mutuality of contract. D. Both 1 and 2. Answer. A. Only one party is bound by the contract in a real estate option. The option he has the right to either purchase or not purchase. Passing the real estate exam can be hard. Like, really hard. Statistically, only about 50% of people actually pass the real estate exam on their first try. Those people that pass, they go on to become real estate agents. And the people that didn't pass, yeah, they either give up completely or have to try again. Both of these options are painful, disappointing, and upsetting. Exam Scholar Real Estate Edition has been named as the best real estate exam prep by multiple publications for seven years in a row. If you are about to take the real estate exam, Exam Scholar Real Estate Edition is a no-brainer choice. There is no other real estate exam preparation service out there that comes close. To enjoy the longest membership time, lowest cost, real estate videos, audios, articles, flashcards, vocabulary, exam tips and tricks, a one-year no questions asked refund policy, and be one of the 35,000 people that it has helped pass the real estate exam, then sign up in less than five minutes at www.realestateexamscholar.com Question 1. What special type of ownership is available in most non-community property states and is only available to married persons? A. Estate by escheat. B. Tenancy by the entirety. C. Dual tenancy. D. Coop estate. Answer. B. Tenancy by the entirety is available in most non-community property states and is automatically the assumed form of ownership when a couple purchases real estate together unless they opt for another form. Question 2. If a restaurant is located in a section of town that has been rezoned from restaurant and retail to commercial office building development, the restaurant can remain there by use of A. A special use permit B. Non-conforming use. C. The grandfather use clause. D. Tenancy inspecuity. Answer. B. 
the restaurant can remain in place by non-conforming use. The restaurant will not be able to expand into other neighboring sites, however. Question 3. A broker gives a written step-by-step -step instruction manual to new agents and instructs them to follow each of the steps exactly in order to produce sales for the brokerage. In addition, the broker threatens to discipline any agent that does not follow the steps, up to and including termination. The agent should a. Be scared of losing the position in the brokerage by means of firing. b. Follow the directions step by step. c. Do what they feel is best for obtaining results for the brokerage. An agent is an independent contractor and liable for results only, not the means they are achieved. d. None of these. Answer. c. A real estate agent working under a broker is liable to the company only for the results achieved as defined in the hiring contract and not by the specific means they are achieved. This is an independent contractor arrangement. If it were an employer-employee relationship, the employer can dictate the specific means of obtaining performance. Question 4. To match the specifications of a subject property, in the market data approach to appraisal, the sales prices of comparable properties are A. Increased. B. Decreased. C. Adjusted. D. Net zeroed. Answer. C. In the sales or market data approach to appraisal, the sales prices of comparable properties are adjusted to match the specifications of a subject property. Question 5. In real estate, the simplest form of property ownership is called A. Joint B. Tenancy in common C. Community D. Severalty Answer D. The simplest form of ownership in regard to real estate is severalty because there is only one owner. All other forms include multiple party owners involved. Question 6. What is the formula for determining the value of an investment property? A. At operating income divided by capitalization rate. B. Capitalization rate multiplied by net operating income. C. Potential gross income divided by operating income. D. Potential gross income divided by capitalization rate. Answer. A. Net operating income is divided by the capitalization rate to arrive at the value of the property. Question 7. If a buyer decides to pay for a property in cash, which form is required to be filed according to the IRS? A. Form 1090. B. Form 9600. C. Form 8300. D. Form 2740B. Answer. C. IRS Form 8300 must be filed on all cash payments that are $10,000 or more. Question 8. A cash payment of $10,001 is given as earnest money to secure a property. What must be filed? A. A documenting receipt. B. A procurement contract? C. An IRS Form 8300? D. An expediting loan form? Answer. C. The IRS requires any cash payments over $10,000 be recorded by filing a Form 8300. Question 9. A vendor vendee is a term that best describes the relationship between a. Purchase and sales. B. Mortgage or mortgagee. C. Grantor grantee. D. Option or optiony. Answer. A. The term vendor vendee is best matched with purchase and sales. Question 10. Which term is best related to lender borrower? A. Grantor grantee. B. Mortgage or mortgagee. C. 
Optioner Option E. D. Seller Buyer. Answer. B. The best match from this list that is related to lender borrower is mortgage or mortgagee. This relationship is a lender borrower relationship. Question 1. At the close of the Civil War, a law that extended equal rights and real property to members of all races is called A. The Civil Property Amendment of 1866. B. The Property Rights Clause of 1868. C. The Civil Property Rights Act of 1865. D. The Civil Rights Act of 1866. Answer. D. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 is the law that granted equal rights and real property to all races in the United States. Question 2. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 prohibits discrimination in real estate based on A. Nationality and religious beliefs B. Religious beliefs C. Gender D. Race Answer D. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 prohibits discrimination in real estate based on race. Question 3. A person with a child under the age of 18 is protected by the federal ban on discrimination based on familial status in order to A. Provide equal access to rentals B. Allow for blockbusting to occur C. Provide equal rights to families D. Allow for a family to live in a tract neighborhood. Answer. A. The federal government provides protection from discrimination for people who have children that need places to live. This protects people from landlords that may try to not allow a person to rent or lease that has children. Question 4. An easement is defined as. A. The legal right to pass over your neighbor's land. B. The right of way through your own property. C. The gradual easing away of land by water. D. None of these. Answer. A. An easement is the legal right to pass over another's land to get to your own or another's land. Question 5. The holder of a life estate may. A. Maintain the property. B. Direct the disposition of the property at the end of the life estate. C. Renew agreements of the life estate in full. D. None of these. Answer. A. The holder of a life estate may maintain the property for the duration of the life estate. Usually the duration of a life estate is based on the life of an individual. Question 6. If Charles finds a home that is for sale by the owner and tells the owner that he will pay the full asking price and promises to send an earnest money check in the mail in the next five days, this contract is A. Valid B. Void C. Voidable D. Unenforceable Answer D. According to the statute of frauds, all contracts for the sale of real estate must be in writing to be enforceable. Question 7. The value of an investment property, as estimated by an appraiser, the potential gross income does not include. A. Settlements from the state government for losses due to eminent domain. B. Estimated rental income based on full occupancy. C. Fees related to parking and storage areas. D. None of these. Answer. A. Settlements or proceeds from the sale of land is not considered in the appraiser's valuation. Question 8. If Janice owns and occupies one side of a two-family house, and she wants to advertise the other side of the house as a non-smoking rental, can this be legally done without discriminating? A. Yes. The right to smoke is not protected by law. B. No. She cannot advertise discriminatory practices in regards to real estate. C. Yes. 
since she is occupying part of the house herself, law provides for this protection. D. No. The only type of discrimination she can use is based on race. Answer. A. There is no law that protects a person's right to smoke. Advertising a rental as non-smoking is not discriminatory and is therefore, legal. Question 9. When there is a conflict and limitations on the development of property, which rule applies? A. The least restrictive. B. The most restrictive. C. There is no rule to determine this. D. None of these. Answer. B. The most restrictive rule applies when there is a conflict and limitations on the development of property. This comes into play if there are zoning restrictions that conflict with architectural restrictions or deed restrictions. Question 10. If an appraiser was using the consumer price index method to determine reproduction costs, this would be A. Reliable B. Not reliable C. Acceptable D. Void Answer B. Reliable methods of determining reproduction costs are the square foot method, most common, cubic foot method, unit in place method, and quantity survey method. Question 1. If Steve J. Carlisle offers to purchase a house from the Jeffersons for $723,000 and a closing scheduled for August 7, and the Jeffersons sign a written acceptance with a provision that closing be executed on August 8, what can happen at this point now? A. Steve can back out of purchasing the house without a penalty. B. Steve can hold the Jeffersons to an August 7 closing. C. Steve can sue for specific performance on August 8. D. None of these. Answer. A. Since the Jeffersons made a counteroffer, it constitutes a rejection of the original offer. Therefore, Steve can either accept the new offer or reject it without penalty. Question 2. An agent knows a person that wishes to sell their existing property to purchase another more expensive property listed through another brokerage. What is the agency relationship to all parties involved? A. The known person is the agent's customer, no relationship exists between the seller of the more expensive property. B. The seller of the more expensive property is the client, the agent is in dual agency with both clients. C. The agent's known person is the client, the seller of the more expensive property is the customer. D. The agent is a dual agent to all parties. Answer. C. Under the laws of agency, in this particular situation, the known person is the client, and the seller of the other property is the customer of the agent. All parties are entitled to fair treatment. Question 3. Jeremy is a salesperson at a local real estate firm. He is required to submit to a dress code, attend meetings, and perform marketing tasks for the firm. He is paid in by weekly paychecks that have federal, state, and local taxes withheld. In this type of situation, the relationship with the firm is most likely that of A. An independent contractor B. An employee C. A contractor for hire D. A manager. Answer. B. This type of situation that requires a person to perform tasks in a specific way for an organization is typical of an employer-employee relationship. Therefore, Jeremy is most likely an employee of the firm. Question 4. A violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act could be. A. Competing brokers discussing fees and business practices. B. A broker discussing fees with an agent. C. An agent buying stock in the firm they are under contract with. D. None of these. Answer. A. Any discussion between competitors could be seen as an attempt to conspire to set the cost of real estate brokerage services, which is in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. 
Question 5. What happens if the principal is incapacitated or suffers death according to the laws of agency? A. Any contracts in place are cancelled. B. All dates are extended to allow time for processing. C. The agency is terminated. D. None of these. Answer. C. Upon death or incapacitation of a principal, the agency is terminated by operation of law. Question 6. What does a planned development consist of? A. Lots owned in common. B. Individual lots. C. Both individual lots and lots owned in common. D. None of these. Answer. C. A planned development includes both lots owned in common, and lots owned individually. Question 7. If a home is located in an area that is zoned for commercial use, the home will have minimum value because of what principle? A. The principle of diminished returns. B. The principle of nonconformity. C. The principle of conformity. D. The principle of delegated zoning. Answer. C. The principle of conformity states that for a property to retain value, it should be in an area that consists of like type properties. Question 8. If a tenant in a commercial building pays a rental fee that includes all property maintenance charges, utilities, and cleaning services, this type of lease is called A. Performance lease. B. Net lease. C. Pro rata lease. D. Gross lease. Answer. B. A net lease is one that includes rent and operating expenses in the rental price. Question 9. In appraising unique properties, which approach is best for determining value? A. B. Cost. C. Gross. D. Comparative. Answer. B. The cost approach is the preferred method when appraising unique properties. Question 10. Of the properties listed, which is considered the most unique and would use the cost approach method of appraisal? A. A piece of land. B. A condominium. C. A historic building. D. A farm. Answer. C. Of the answers given, a historical building is the most unique type of building and would therefore use the preferred appraisal method of the cost approach. Question 1. The real estate commission for a property that is in probate is set by A. The real estate B. The decedent C. A court order D. A probate officer Answer C. Commissions for property sold in probate are set by the individual court district. Question 2. The value of the best property in the neighborhood will be adversely affected by the presence of comparatively substandard property, is a statement relating to value and is known as the principle of A. Balance B. Contribution C. Regression D. Progression. Answer. C. The principle of regression states that the worth of a greater valued property is reduced by the proximity of many lesser valued properties of the same type. Question 3. Which of the following types of lenders would have the greatest percentage of and the most funds invested in real estate mortgages? A. Savings and Loan Associations. B. Commercial banks. C. Life insurance companies. D. Mutual savings banks. Answer. 
A. Savings and loan associations place a greater percentage of their funds into real estate loans. These loans, namely, are in the single-family dwelling area. As to life insurance companies, they prefer long-term, high-valued commercial properties. Commercial banks, due to the liquidity requirements, prefer short-term loans such as construction loans, although here too, funds are available for the home loan marker. Question 4. An addition to land resulting in the formation of a gradual buildup by natural causes. The party who would benefit from this would be a. The landowner. b. The local government. c. The federal government. d. The landowner's neighbor. Answer. a. The question describes accretion, and the land that accretes from a river belongs to the adjoining landowner. Question 5. No prudent person would pay more for a parcel of real property than the price of a reasonably close alternative, which is available without undue delay, refers mass nearly to the principle of a. Balance b. Conformity c. Substitution d. Intervention Answer c. The principle of substitution, in essence, states that no prudent person would pay more for a parcel of real property than the price of a reasonably close alternative which is available without undue delay. Question 6. Sam inherited rolling hills from his uncle. The first thing he did with the vacant property was to remove all the topsoil, which he sold to a landscaping company. Sam then removed a thick layer of limestone and sold it to a construction company. Finally, he dug 40 feet into the bedrock and sold it for gravel. When Sam died, he left rolling hills to his daughter, Pat. Which of the following statements is true? A. Pat inherits nothing, because rolling hills no longer exists. B. Pat inherits a large hole in the ground, but it is still rolling hills, bound to the center of the earth. C. Pat owns the gravel, limestone, and topsoil, no matter where it is. D. Sam's estate must restore rolling hills to its original condition. Answer. B. Pat inherits exactly what Sam owned just before his death, a location on the earth's surface, everything below it to the center of the earth and the space above it toward the heavens. Question 7. A true statement regarding floor waters is that flood waters. A. Refer to water in minor depths, either standing or flowing, which do not produce serious surface scour or leave deposits of silt. B. Refer to water on the surface of the land but lower than the water table in the area. C. Are deemed the enemy of every affected owner and owner may protect their property by employment any reasonable protective measures. D. Are found below the water table, at the water table, and above the water table. Answer. C. Flood waters, water from a downpour, river overflowing its bank, one may protect himself against such flood by building a dike, or sand bagging or other methods of diverting the water to other property owners. Question 8. Single family home values are least protected in neighborhoods where there is A. A similarity of income of the owners. B. A predominance of residents belonging to the same ethnic or religious group affiliation. C. A minimum of change to existing restrictions as a result of legal restrictions. D. An increasing mixture of average quality homes with high quality homes. Answer. D. In an area where average quality homes are being constructed among high quality homes, there would tend to be a decrease in the overall neighborhood property values. Question 9. The primary justification for zoning ordinances is that they a. Promote conformity in the outward appearances of structures. b. Limit the supply of specific businesses within a zoned area. c. Promote the general health, safety and welfare of the community. d. Increase the tax base of the local governing body. Answer. 
c. One of the requirements before a zoning ordinance is considered lawful is that it promotes the general health, safety and welfare of the community. Question 10. Which of the following actions or events would result in the termination of a sales escrow? a. Revocation of the escrow instructions by the broker of the seller. b. The cancellation of the escrow by either party. c. The mutual consent of the parties. D. The death of either of the parties. Answer. C. Escrow instructions are an agreement between buyer and seller, and cannot be unilaterally cancelled without the consent of the other. Death would not terminate their agreement, but the instructions would be a contract normally binding upon the heirs. Escrow can be terminated by the mutual consent of the parties. Exam Scholar, Real Estate Edition.